Well, here we are folks. We've brought the RSX100 into the log cabin. I was gonna do a bit of work on the uh, mobile Ep moped today, but um, I've not been well, as you probably know, for the last few weeks, a couple of weeks, and I'm getting out of breath very quickly, so I didn't want to really do sandblasting and stuff like that. So anyway, I thought I'd bring this in. I've been buying some parts for it. Let's show you what I've got. So as you probably know, I've gone for the new forks, brand new set of forks here. These are off of a, a YBR, is it a YBR125? And I've also got the uh, yokes there and also the bottom yoke, the top yoke and the bottom yoke there. I've also bought the uh, clock bracket and the clock. Well, that's the um, speedometer. And I've also got a rev counter, which I've just bought. That's coming now. I bought the two wheels. This is one of them. This is the rear wheel. They're alloy wheels, as you can see, compared to the normal uh, wheels that are already on there. Although that one's probably savable, to be honest with you. This is a back wheel. And also this wheel at the front here is also another sort of back wheel. So I probably will keep hold of them maybe. I'm not too sure yet, but uh, we'll see how we go. As you can see, the mud guards were totally US themed to the extent where this one was missing. So you're, you're able to buy reproduction mud guards now. As you can see, that will go on there like that. There we go. There we go, that doesn't look too bad, does it already? <laughs> I've also got a brand new seat cover coming. But the actual seat base is something which I'm going to have to uh, get sorted out because this one's totally had it there. Someone's obviously drilled the air box. This was a thing we used to do back in the 80s, riding bikes, to try and get more air in. But uh, I don't really think it worked. I think this is actually locked up, this engine, so we can't actually turn it over. So it'll be a total engine stripped down as well. Because when we found this bike, or when Gary found this bike, it was actually turned upside down. And there's no exhaust port on it, as you can see, so the piston probably a collected water in there so that's the problem we've got there now we've uh, found the original engine number on there for uh, frame number sorry and it matches the engine which is a good thing but someone in their infinite wisdom had decided to try and put some sort of different number on there you probably can't see that from here but um 
it doesn't matter because this isn't the number at all. We've done a VIN check for the proper number and the engine number there, and it doesn't come up with any problems at all on any police records or anything. So we're happy that it's just a, a bike that was scrapped actually back in, I think it was 2004, 2005. So it was actually scrapped, but that doesn't mean that it can't be brought back on the road again. Uh, that's to obviously go through the uh, proper MOT checks and stuff like that. But that's a while off. I've got another tank. If we come through here, you can see down there with a the red and white stripe on, that's um, another spare tank for it. And there's the Mobilette, folks, which I would have been working on today, but um, I didn't want to sort of create any dust and all that because I've got this chest infection. So, yeah, just a, a little start to get it in here, maybe, and uh, see what we've got to start and work with. I've got a lot of work to do. Look at all the spider's webs in there, look. Unbelievable, isn't it? I thought I'd just bring you in and get it up here. At least we're making a start now. And uh, we, we can see a way forward now with it. So I've got some donkey work to do now, obviously, and uh, I'll start stripping it down. And uh, you can see that process right now. Right, so time to strip this little thing down. It's very, very rusty, folks. There's loads of bolts that are corroded. I know I'm gonna have problems with this. I've just gotta persevere and get my way through it. So I'll take the main things off, which is the tank and the uh, seat, first of all. Both of these can't be retained. They're both useless. And as you can see, under the uh, seat unit and the tank, it's full of corrosion, full of rust. Things have been just sort of uh, partially dismantled from the previous owner. And don't forget, this thing was actually tipped upside down and stored outside for years and years before we actually took uh, purchase of it. So I'm taking off the easy stuff first, the stuff which I know I could get undone, Some things like the handlebar bolts, for example. Get these handlebars on. I won't be out using any of this stuff because, again, the cables are all corroded. Uh, I may use the hangers at the end of the handlebars, but I'm not sure yet. Plastic front on the air box can come off. The air filter was totally shot inside. And this is where I started to get problems with bolts that were seized on. A lot of these haven't got any heads on them as such. It's just uh, JIS screws which are well rounded off and uh, well seized in basically. So I had to use various methods using grips and uh, lubricant. And I couldn't use any heat because it was a plastic part, so I had to just persevere doing it that way. Failing that, I would have had to drill the parts out. So I did try to get the carb off and the throttle slide, which was totally stuck in the carb. So in the end, I had to resort to just uh, cutting the cable there, as you can see. Uh, I will be having to put new cables on these because they was all seized anyway. So the carb, as I say, it looked very, very corroded inside, folks. So that would be an ultrasonic cleaner job. I tried to retain the, uh, the loom as much as I could. So I'm pulling it out in one go. Whether or not I can retain that, whether it's been messed about with hacks about in the past, I'm not fully too sure yet, but um, I'll check that in its entirety, obviously in a different video. So I'm just taking a few ancillaries off now. And the rear rack, which is probably still going to be okay. I may be able to retain that, so I'm pretty happy with that. And that came off nice and easy, but I'm, I'm giving a, a good squirt with lubricant to some of the other parts to let it soak in as well. Just trying to feed the uh, loom through the frame and get it off in one go. Taking off a few electrical components as well. got off in one go right well the whole part now or the main part rather is to get the engine out of the frame that was my intention today and as usual engine casing screws are of a JOS type but they were totally seized in and again didn't really want to heat it up and damage things so um, what I've had to do is resort to the tapping method and, and slight turning backwards and forwards using lubricant and slowly but surely persevere and the art here is to have a good fitting screwdriver because these are long screws and if you round the heads on these you can drill the heads off and pull the studs out afterwards but um, 
it's just a, it's a whole pain of a job getting these sort of screws out I may replace these in future with um, Allen bolt the long Allen bolts that you can get I just find them a lot easier to uh, deal with this isn't going to be a totally standard bike anyway as you well know I've got different wheels going on this and also different front forks all new stuff so um, yeah it's going to be a, a sympathetic restoration not using totally original parts all the way through and the other problem here I had was the um, gear lever shaft was stuck in the casing and I had to persevere with that with a soft blow hammer and obviously lubricant as well pulling and pushing at the same time so glad I got that off so just done doing the final engine bolts here as you can see one at the front one at the back And once I get this out, I'm not really too bothered about the rest. I'll do that off camera. But I thought I'd just go through this just to show you the sort of thing that I came up against in taking apart an old rusted bike been left out for years and years. Right, folks, there's been a lot of a uh, bit of swearing going on. There's been a lot of uh, nuts that have been stuck and bolts and stuff like that, as you probably saw in the time lapse. But I just want to get the engine out. That's what I want to do today, achieve that anyway. And uh, I feel like I've gotten somewhere then. So I've just undone the last bolt of the engine bolt. And uh, let's see if it comes out. I did see movement. It's a bit rusted in, I think. Yeah, I think it's just all the crap around the mountains. Put a bit of squirt down there. I think it's just where it's all dry, you know. I think I've got all the bolts out. So I've got this soft blow hammer here. Let's just tap that back in again. some squirt down there right a bit of a lever hold on bear with me yeah gotta get the front up I think it's not that it's heavy it's just awkward I think if I lift the front up then hopefully I can pull it forward a bit he's just said and done The bottom bolt where the bottom bolt was uh, going in the engine that's holding it on. I think I might have to take the centre stand off just to give us a bit of room. Hold on, folks. Oh, hello, project man's turned up. Look, I'll tell you right, I might need you help in a minute. Well, I need to hurry up because I've got someone picking the mower up. When? Right now. Right, we better go then. Go on, off you go. That's what I do, see. I'll sell mowers, bikes. All right, let's just get this. Uh, let's just get this footrest off, folks. <sighs> He's a boy, honey. He? I'm here doing all the donkey work. I think that should come down now. I think that was just yeah. See, see that drop then? I think that was just holding it on. <sighs> right. Now, have we got more movement? It's a bit awkward. Let me go around the other side again, folks. I think I nearly had it out this side when I had it. It's only a little blinking engine, it should come out all right. There we go. Happy days. The RSX 100 has left the building, the engine. Well, as you can see, folks, it's a little bit dirty, and the spiders and cobwebs have been living in here. So, uh, I want to get the engine out, obviously, before I take the wheels and the forks and the suspension off. But there's only a few little things stuck on here which I couldn't remove at the moment. That was, uh, might be a flasher relay, that or something, I'm not too sure. There's some other electrical component there, where the screw's fixed on there, and that's, uh, probably have to be drilled out, that one. But, uh, back end shouldn't be a problem. The front forks are coming down and off and away, because we've got new front forks to go in there. And I think that'll do it for today, folks. The engine will be stripped down as a single video. So uh, hopefully next time you see this, it will all be in pieces, just like the Mobilette, which is awaiting sandblasting now. So Project Man's still working on them fork legs there, as you can see. So uh, that's something we've uh, got to look forward to on his channel. Hello, come in. Oh, oh hello. 
Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, baby. Oh, 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 oh. Well, look who just turned up. We don't normally see him on this channel anymore, do we? Can we see you? Are you in shot? Oh, you are. Yeah, you're just in the background, aren't you? Yeah, look, I wanted to come around and see you. Look, you looking in the background. Make sure you're all right. You look like Action Man today. Action Man. <laughs> He's got a dark beard today, look. I've got those, those eyes, isn't you know, it? Unbelievable. You move around the back of the head. Yeah, don't stand behind me, you're frightening me. Anyway, folks, we're going to leave it here now for this. We'll call this one part one. Virtually stripped down. Oh, I think all the hard stuff's down now anyway. So uh, Merlin's at the door. I've got him there and I've got him behind me. I don't know which way to turn for safety. So I'm going to go now and I'll see you in the next video. So don't forget, check out my other videos and see what ones you like. I'm sure there's plenty you like to see. And we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. What about my channel? Lee Van Camp, yeah, oh, oh go on. Sorry, sorry no, you want to give a plug on his channel. I'm just about to put another one on it. Lee Van Camp, are you really? Yeah, yeah. Go and have a look at his channel, I'll leave a link in the description below this video. Is that what are you doing? I'm just looking at your bike. You touch, mate, you get your hands dirty, you start working here. Oh, no, I'll See you later, folks. No. <laughs>